The Abrahamic religions refer to the world's three primary monotheistic religions. These main three religions include Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Although there are many differences between these religions, they are also very similar. One of the main similarities between these religions is that each religion shares a common ancestry with the patriarch Abraham. A patriarch is any biblical person who is considered a father or founder of a human race. Other famous biblical patriarchs that stem from Abraham include Isaac and Jacob. The common ancestry of the Abrahamic religions begins with Terah. Terah was the father of Abram. Abram grew up in the Sumerian city of Ur. When Abram was a child, his father Terah worshipped many idols. Abram, however, didn't believe what his father practiced and wanted to know more about other religions. Abram believed that there were not many idols, but instead there was only one single creator who created the entire universe. At the age of 10, Abram moved to Kadem to live with his distant relatives Noah and Shem. At Kadem, Abram learned more about the single creator God from Noah and Shem. Throughout Abram's life, the Lord appeared to him many times and made a covenant with him. At the age of 75, Abram received his first calling from the Lord. The Lord called to him and said, Go forth from the land of your kinsfold and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. If Abram followed his command, the Lord promised that he would be blessed and become a great leader among the nations. After hearing this, Abram took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all their possessions and made their way from Haran to Canaan as the Lord instructed. On the way there, the Lord appeared again, telling Abram that the land they were on, the Lord would give to them. After hearing this, Abram built an altar in honor of the Lord's message. When Abraham built this altar, his obedience and worship to the Lord was made evident. By building the altar, he worshiped and praised the Lord's appearance to him and expressed his belief and trust in what the Lord had said to him. However, Abram became worried that the Lord's gift of many nations, which was promised to him, would not be useful because Abram had no children. Abram's wife, Sarai, was unable to bear children, so she allowed her maid servant, Hagar, to bear Abram's child. This allowed Abram to have his first son, who was named Ishmael. At the age of 99, the Lord appeared to Abram again. This time, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, My covenant with you is this, You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be changed to Abraham, for I am making you the father of a host of nations. The Lord added to this covenant, saying that he would make Abraham very fertile, and from him many descendants would follow. These descendants would obtain the land where Abraham made his first altar in Canaan. However, this covenant the Lord made with Abraham must be kept by all his descendants as stated by the Lord. At this time, God also changed Sarai's name to Sarah and said that he would bless her with a son who would later become the ruler of many nations after his father Abraham. To Abraham and Sarah, this blessing was a miracle. At first, Abraham and Sarah didn't believe she would bear a son. Prior to the blessing, she was unable to bear a son and was 90 years old, while Abraham was 99. However, God kept his covenant with Abraham, and Sarah had a son who was named Isaac as the Lord had instructed to them. The birth of Isaac allowed Abraham and Sarah's faith in the Lord to be very high. Abraham truly believed then that he would become the father of many nations. One day, God put Abraham's faith to the test. The Lord summoned Abraham and told him to sacrifice his son, Isaac, at the land of Moriah. Following the Lord's instructions, Abraham took his son and some wood to the place that God had instructed. Abraham built an altar in honor of his word and laid Isaac down, preparing to sacrifice him. As Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, the Lord appeared and said, Do not lay your hand on the boy. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold me from your beloved son. From this appearance of the Lord, the altar built by Abraham is once again symbolized as a place of worship. 
the Lord called Abraham and asked to make a sac sacrifice. So Abraham did as he was told and prepared to sacrifice his son on the holy altar he prepared. This occurrence made it evident that Abraham trusted and worshipped in the Lord even if it meant losing his only beloved son. After the death of his wife Sarah, Abraham addressed the Hittites in the land of Canaan, asking if he could buy a burial site for his wife. The Hittites allowed Abraham to bury Sarah in the cave at Machpelah. When Abraham then passed away at the age of 175 due to old age, his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him next to Sarah at Machpelah. Isaac, born through a miracle, was the only son of Abraham and Sarah. Through God's will, Sarah bore Isaac, who would become a great descendant of Abraham. When Sarah died, Abraham decided to find a wife for his son Isaac. Abraham sent his servant to find a woman from his own place, whom he could marry, as was the custom. The servant came to a well and prayed to God that girls would come to the well and offer water. But the girl who offers water for the camel would be the one who Isaac would marry. When the servant reached the well, a girl came and offered water to him and the camels. Not only did she offer water though, she also offered the servant a room for him and his camels. When she offered these things, the servant knew then that this would be Isaac's wife. Her name was Rebekah and she went back to Canaan with the servant and married Isaac. Isaac became an influential patriarch in the Abrahamic religions when his father, Abraham, had his faith put to the test by being asked to sacrifice his son, Isaac. When Abraham found out that it was just a test of his faith, God called to him, saying, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. From what the Lord told Abraham, it is evident that Isaac will become one of the great descendants of Abraham. Similar to Abraham's wife, Sarah, Isaac's wife, Rebekah, was very sterile. Because of this, Isaac asked for the Lord's blessing on Rebekah so that she could bear a child. Soon after, the Lord heard Isaac's prayer, and Rebekah became pregnant. While she was pregnant, the Lord called to Rebekah, saying, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples are quarreling while still within you. But one shall surpass the other, and the other shall serve the younger. When Rebekah gave birth, she had twin sons, whom she named Esau, the older, and Jacob, the younger. Jacob became influential in the Abrahamic religions through his deception to his father Isaac. As Esau and Jacob were growing up, Isaac preferred Esau because he was interested in hunting, while Rebekah preferred Jacob. Because Isaac preferred Esau and because he was older than Jacob, Isaac prepared to give Esau his special blessing in return for some food. Isaac wanted to give Esau his blessing because he was getting old and about to die. When Rebekah heard Isaac bargaining with Esau, she told Jacob what Isaac had said because she preferred Jacob and would rather have him receive Isaac's blessing. In this bargain, Isaac instructed Esau to go hunt and catch him some game to make a meal for Isaac. In return, Isaac would bless him. While Rebekah told Jacob the deal, he went hunting, prepared a meal, and tricked Isaac that he was Esau and got blessed. Jacob was able to trick Isaac because Isaac's eyesight was getting very poor. To trick Isaac, Rebekah put fur on Jacob's hands so that when Isaac felt his hands, they would feel like Esau's due to the fact that he had hairier arms. When Esau came back and found out that Jacob got blessed, he became jealous and said that he would kill Jacob after his father passed away. When Rebekah heard that Esau planned on killing Jacob, she instructed Jacob to flee to Haran where he could live with Rebekah's brother Laban in order to stay away from Esau. On the way to Haran, the 